Notice here I have expose, of course, but now we're going to look at spaces a bit more. So down in here in spaces, I have several things that you can see. I have the left, Adium, Dictionary, Firefox, and so far. Right above that, I have all these different little windows with numbers on them. I can make as many of the subs as I want. Look at this. I hit plus, and then I have another column. Hit minus, it takes it away. Removing spaces will modify your bindings. Yes, great. So that actually probably, that actually might screw, <laughs> screw me up um, because I have things stuck in different spaces. But we'll look at that and, and, and see. I think not since I added extra ones on there and just deleted them. So what does that binding mean? I can associate programs that I want to open up with particular spaces. For instance, a program I use to organize things all the time is OmniFocus. And it says space 9. That means every time OmniFocus opens up, it's going to open in space 9. Notice down here, it says keyboard and mouse shortcuts. This allows me to activate spaces and to go to the spaces I want. Um, one quick thing to show about that, in Expose, it actually gives you down at the bottom, um, sorry, it actually gives you the ability for hot corners, which can also work with spaces. And notice that my bottom left hot corner is for spaces. So I'm first going to do that. I'm going to show you what it looks like to go to OmniFocus. First I'm going to zoom back out of here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom left corner and it's going to engage spaces and show you all the spaces that are open. Now you see all nine of these virtual desktops. And just like with Expose, if I hover over it, um, it'll select the area I'm on. Just when I click it, it'll go to it. So look at this. I can click here on space 9. Here it is, OmniFocus. And I've told you about categorizing your ideas into different things. I've told you about how you can use the hot corner to assign spaces. I haven't told you about the key keyboard shortcuts yet, or about combining it with Expose, or about moving your files around. We'll look at that next. So I'm going to engage the hot corner again, left, bottom corner. It takes me back to where I was. I click here in space number five, and I'm back to system preferences, warping there as if through space. Ah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get there by shortcuts. I have shortcut keys assigned to all kinds of things, as you might imagine. And so I've changed their default one. I think it defaults to Apple 1, 2, 3, or something like that. But I've done this one instead. This one with this little, this little carrot, you see? This little upside-down triangle, or upside-down V, rather. The upside down V on a Macintosh refers to the control button. This one right here, this flower type of uh, leprechaun flower thing, um, that refers to the Apple button, which is also called the command button. This one below, which is this downward L thing with a dash coming out, this one here refers to the Apple's option button. Option slash alt. So once again, control Apple slash command, option slash alt. A lot of times you'll see these things, shortcuts in the Apple, and you might think, especially if you're a previous Windows user, what the heck is that? Well, that's uh, the symbol that relates to those uh, function buttons. Okay, I'm going to click control plus the number keys. What that means is when I hold down the control button and hit a number key, again, we're going to go to space 9, takes me, and shows me a little diagram on screen too, it takes me to that particular space that I wanted to go to. So that's excellent. Now if I want to go to space 1, hit 1. Okay, and hegemony, um, you'll see various things of course that I'm working on, all my um, religious and Mac related things and stuff. You go to space 2, control 2, and I'm keeping it down, keeping the button held down, otherwise this little screen we see on screen will disappear. Three take it off, 
disappears. Four, I have a website. Five, back to where I was. Six, I have a project in my music stuff open. Seven, eight, so on. Okay, let's go back to five. So I'm going to break this particular podcast into two parts. In the next part, I'm going to tell you about the rest of spaces. I'm going to tell you about methods for using it, using it in conjunction with expose, and about dragging files back and forth between spaces and between areas. So I hope you're able to get something out of this, maybe learn a bit more about spaces or learn about, understand more about virtual desktops. And I hope you also watch the next podcasts.